Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, it did occur to me that when I did my unboxing video on these figures, I didn't actually unbox the figures themselves in the same video. So um, I had already planned to do this anyway, and then after a comment that I got asking to have these opened up, of course I was going to do it regardless. So uh, I'll go ahead and do the video for this now. So what I'll do is I'll start with the single figures, open them up, look at each one of them, their accessories, that kind of thing, and then I'll go into the uh, the two packs here. So we move all these out of the way, and we'll start with the, the singles first. So get these big guys moved. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll start off with uh, Chani here on top. So get into this on the bottom here. That is very snug. There we go. Okay, so. Get this out of the way. Okay, so here she is in the package. Uh, of course, the package is a one and done, so once you open this up, there's no boxing it back up the way it was. Um, the base, it does come with a terrain base this time instead of the regular black dune logo base that the uh, first movie figures had and there's a little uh, kind of a character bio card here so let me get into this so try to keep it as neat as i possibly can for storage and whatnot if i ever have to move okay so the figure is out base is out and then the uh the bio card just says the same thing that the back of the, uh, the figure says, or the back of the box says. I'll take the base here, and she is in like this. So these are kind of rubbery twist tie material, so I'm just going to cut through it to make it easier. Okay. Don't want to mess up the figure there. There we go. Okay. Tucked in there well. There we go. Okay. Get them right there. And oops. I threw it before I got her uh, Chris knife out. She has a Chris knife in here too. That's her accessory. So it's just the one knife. There we go. So here she is, uh, soft goods cape. Um, got some, got a little bit of um, posability to the cloak. Actually, there's some uh, stiffness to the the hem, so you can actually kind of flail it back a little bit to kind of put her in a action pose with like the wind would be blowing or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it stays formed, which is nice. So uh, we put the figure, put the knife in the figure's hand here. And, uh, if I can, I'm assuming, I'll tell you what, today she's going to be left-handed, so, maybe. Sorry, i got to go off camera here to get this in here, because it is a very snug fit in the hand, which is good, you don't want her to drop it, but, there we go. Okay. So there she is, and uh, there's the, the face, got a good likeness, back of her head, she's got her hair braided, uh, looks like there's a hood back here, but it seems to be pretty well down, oh, I guess you could pull it up, yeah, so if you kind of do the exorcist thing with her head, you might be able to get the hood up over it, but I think her, uh, I don't know if her braid will fit have to twist her head all the way around or possibly pop it off. I wonder if that would work. There we go. So we'll take the take that off, put her hair into the uh, hood here. 
yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to come up all the way, um, kind of partially. So, looks like it's more of a, a down hood. It, it, it could fit if you really wanted it to, but I'm not going to take a whole bunch of time here to try to get a hood to pull up on her head like that. So, just pop her head back on the way it was. There we go. Anyway, so that's Chani. Uh, she's got this clasp here that is attached. It doesn't seem like it's going to come off. So, but she's got the posable soft goods cape here. So you can kind of set her up in a pose and have her looking all battle ready. So that's her. And we will get her on her stand here. And there we go. So we'll set her off the side for now. We'll get them all lined up in a minute when we're all done here. Okay, on to Paul. Okay, get him opened up. Oops. These boxes are really snug. Same story with him, uh, the base and the card. So I'm just going to take the base out because the card doesn't really do much. So I'm just going to leave the card where it is for him. Unfortunately, he's only got the one strand. So it should be a little easier to cut. I just don't want to affect the cloak. So do it that way. There we go. Much easier. Okay. So he's there, and he comes with a sword. Which is just attached by scotch tape. Or held in by scotch tape, I should say. Okay, so on to him. Again, he's got a good likeness of Timothy Chalamet. He's got the nose plug in. And he has the same kind of uh, posable soft goods cape. Uh, there's definitely a wire of some kind in the fabric at the hem that lets it uh, be posed up, you know, in a very dramatic way. Same with the inner cloak. So that can do the same thing as you see here. So that's very posable. And of course the figure has, <clears throat> I didn't go over the points of articulation on it, um, they have posable toes and uh, the feet rotate a little bit. Uh, the knees bend uh, in two places. So that's excellent because you get multiple posing options with the knee more naturally posable. Uh, it poses at the waist, at the at the crotch there. Uh, the torso twists up here at the rib cage. And uh, not a lot of not a lot of posing below that, but enough. And then of course the elbows, the arms pose all the way up. So there's a rotator cuff, and then you've got the bicep rotates, you've got the uh, elbow poses uh, at three point at two points, you've got a three position elbow there, and the wrist twists here. And then the head is on a ball socket, ball socket joint. <clears throat> so, it's his pose. And let's see if we can get him to hold his sword here. This is even a larger sword than Chani's Chris knife. So this is going to be a real fun one here. Let's see if we can get him in here. There we go. Just have to kind of work with it a little bit. There we go. There he is. Move these other figures out of the way so you can see him better. A very long sword. 
And then of course the base is uh, pretty much identical to the Chani base. So it's the same rock formation, same, same look to it. So the bases are not unique. And then just a peg on the base with the heel and in he goes. So there he is. Moving on here. We're gonna fade. This is the first time we're actually seeing him other than in the trailer because you know the movie was supposed to be out next month, but it's now been pushed to March. Much to my disappointment. But you know, good things come to those who wait, right? Interestingly, he just gets the uh, the circular black base, I guess, because he wouldn't be out in the, the desert sands like Chani and Paul would be. So I'll pop him over here. The card's just sliding around, but I'll leave the card in there because, again, it's the same thing. It's on the back of the box. It's just a brief little bio of the character. Put this uh, up here. He's definitely tucked in there well. Oh, because the cape is through the back. Okay. There we go. And then he has two weapons. A sword, or a sword and a short sword. Okay, so put all the bits of trash out of here. All right, so again, a really good likeness. Um, his head, there we go. Seemed like it was at a weird twist there for a second. That's just the way it was packed. So his head's on the ball joint as usual. It's got a really good likeness of the, the actor. Um, oh, Austin, something, I forget what his name is. Off the top of my head, it'll come to me later. But, uh, the guy who played Elvis. Uh, but anyway, he also has the posable cape. So that seems to be kind of a recurring theme with this, is to have these uh, posable soft goods capes. So it can be kind of spread out a bit. It's not as stiff as the Furman capes were, but uh, still, pretty, still pretty good. It's still pretty uh, posable, because you can see, you know, if he's... Flat, it, it still maintains the position, so. Same posability, same uh, points of articulation. Really good look on the armor there. There's the back of him. And then he comes with two weapons, as I said. So let's see if we can get his in his hand here. His hand is even more rigid than Paul's was. My dog has come to visit. Hello, Simon. That's the snorting you hear. All right, one in and then the other. There we go. All right after much ado there. So he's got his and he can pose dramatically. His blades, his cape out, that kind of thing. And we'll put him on his stand, which again, is just the same stand that the series one Dune figures had, just the black base with the name of the movie, in the movie font, I should say. And there he is, his fade, okay. And then Emperor Shaddam IV here, into him, Christopher Walken. 
Austin Butler is the uh, actor's name for Fade. It just popped into my head. So. These are very tough boxes to get into without creasing. There we go. So this one I'm, I was curious about, and someone commented on the last video asking the same question, which was, what's underneath the robe as far as, like, do they have a cool set of armor on him or something? So um, we're about to find out. So I'm going to come in from the back on this so that uh, I don't take a chance on cutting that fabric. Should have done it that way to begin with for all of them. And they are all tucked into the package is really good. Put them in here. Okay, so first off, you know, excellent likeness of Christopher Walken. So let's see, does he have any kind of cool armor on? Let's pull up Christopher Walken's skirts here and see. Uh, not really. Not really at all. Um, nope. Just a naked body, but more like a body suit, I guess. Just a paint, paint job on him. Uh, arms are bare, so nothing there. So he's actually no real uh, secrets there. He's doing a very dramatic point, though, which is nice. And uh, the robes do have a little uh, loop to keep the sleeve at the wrist, which is nice. And there's a little bit of posability to that as well, that same, that same kind of posable hemline. And then uh, he also has the same round base, like Fade and the uh, other Series 1 figures had. Let's pop that out of there. So no accessories with him at all, which kind of makes sense, but I'm surprised he doesn't have a, a knife that he would, you know, hand to fade, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be in another box I'm going to open here in a minute, so. Um, really good likeness. Um, it's cool to have the figure, uh, but I will say this is probably the least interesting of the figures, um, just as far as a, from a toy point of view, uh, there's just not much to him at all, um, so. I'm going to say disappointing, but, you know, not very exciting. So, now moving on to the two packs here. Well, first off, we've got uh, Stilgar and Shashakli. So, we'll get this open here. I talked about Shashakli in the last video. So, if you're curious about who that is, check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Oh, we got two multiple tape points here. They have a large base where they can be posed next to each other. And of course the uh the bio cards up here. So let's see if I can get this out without having to tear the whole thing open here. It's not looking good. I'm trying to do minimal damage. There we go. There we are. All right, so got the base out. Box is still mostly intact. Same bio cards, which is why I'm not taking them out. And they come with a bunch of stuff. They've got the special rocket launchers, uh, another soft goods cloak for her, replacement head. So let me uh, cut my twisties here. on the other side. There we go. Those are the two launchers. Some 
spare head for her. Plastic too, tucked to the back. And still got it right there. There we go. Okay, these are a mess. All right. So uh, you have Shashakli here, who is another Fremen warrior, and her hood does come up really nicely. So uh, it's the benefit of the one for one, the bigger hood, and two, the uh, the shorter hair sculpt there. So her hood comes up right over. Uh, the other good thing about her is um, she has a female body, but it's still not overly so. So if you're looking to do to spend some money and do like an army builder kind of thing uh, with this replacement head, uh, you can pop this on somehow, he said. Of course, this one's not going to cooperate with me. Why would it? Anyway, so you can pop the hood on, I'm um, pop the uh, replacement head on, and then you've got just kind of a generic Fremen, especially if you bring the hood up and over, like so. You've definitely got like just a generic Fremen warrior that could be, you know, male or female, depending on pretty much how you pose them and where you put them, and you know, really it's just the backside that looks more female with the, the, the curved uh, small of the back. So if you had the cloak down, you know, it, it's really kind of generic, which is nice. So you can have, you know, whichever way you want to do it. And I did not get her head on good. So let's see if we can get her original head back on. If not, I'll just have to do with this later. There, okay. So her OG head went on without a problem. So that's good. So I'm not exactly sure how they hold this. Because you would think it would just be up here. But that's a really big pistol grip on this thing. Uh, I'm going to look at the back of the box, see if they show imposed with it. No, they do not. So, just going to have to do as best I can with it. So, this is going to be interesting. I may fight with this one later. I don't want to take up a whole bunch of video time trying to get weapons into hands, especially on smaller hands like this. That's definitely a, a hard sell there to get that in. But Anywho, yeah, she's going to be a little bit more of a challenge on that. So we'll just look at her pose here real quick, and then we'll move on to Stilgar and just keep on going for the sake of the video not being an hour long. So same posability as everybody else. Uh, there's a sculpt of the actress's face. I have no idea who the actress is playing this role, but uh, it looks like that will be whoever it's supposed to be. And uh, again, the cloak can be posed to one side or the other. It's got the, the, the posable hem in it, just like the others. And then, of course, the weapon is here with the, uh, the wrap around it, which is nice. Nice little detail, but that's just molded onto it. So there's the design of the weapon, the rocket launcher and then Stilgar is here and he has the uh, face mask that they had in the series one figures but he also has the kind of headset on and you can bring the face mask up cover his face and get it tucked off under his neck here Hung up under the edge of his shoulder pad. There we go. There we go. There we go. So he's got the, the mask on that way. So he's ready for desert travel or, you know, COVID or what have you. Hi, Harley. Thank you for joining us. So, go ahead and get them on the bases real quick. 
there's one peg, there's two pegs, so I'll put the still draw on the right peg here. Get the hazel light up. Don't knock my, my camera over. Yeah. And we'll put her on the base right here. There we go. So, again, I'll mount them later better, but they just both stand on the base together. Moving on. We got Paul. And Fade. I'm sorry, we got uh, Gurney and Raban. Paul and Fade's the last box. Uh, Gurney, Halleck, and Raban. So this is going to be a nice uh, kind of Arch Enemies kind of box set here. These larger boxes are easier to open. And again, it looks like the same base. Um, well, there's an additional thing in here. We've got uh, Raban's Ink Vine Whip, which this time looks uh, flexible, whereas the last time it was just kind of coiled up. Sort of posable. Um, not really. Interesting. It's, um, don't eat that. It's, uh, like a rigid plastic. It's a little bendable, but it's not really, uh, not really posable. That's interesting. I thought it was going to be more like that, uh, material in the, um, robes where you can kind of get like a good spread of the whip, but, uh, no, and this one is pretty much just is as it is. And some of these pieces are even, you know, together. They don't they don't come apart, so thank you. So interesting. So let me get the base out of here. Sorry about all the noise, but it really can't be helped. right into the video, huh? That's okay. Cat videos do better on YouTube anyway, so maybe it'll get me a few more views and subscribers, Harley. I appreciate it. is Dave Batista. Definitely got the good uh, sculpt of him. He even has the kind of crinkly back head, back of the head here. And the posability, the upper torso does not bend on him. Um, he's, he's much more stiff in the upper body. Uh, the legs twist at the waist uh, a little bit and they twist. Did they twist at the thigh or not? On the Build-A-Figure they did. They attached at the thigh it looks like they might have reused the mold for that. 
but it doesn't move. So it looks like there might be a hairline in it from where the Build-A-Figure had the attaching point. But it is a different sculpt on the armor than the Build-A-Figure from Series 1, but the legs look similar. I'm wondering if they didn't just use the same mold. But uh, anyway, so he's got the poseable arm joint. It does not go up on that side at all. That's interesting. So this arm rotates like that. But, oh, no, it does. I'm sorry. It's just very stiff. Wow. Okay. So it does It does go out. Okay. That was a little weird. This one's super smooth. Almost loose, but not, not completely loose. But this one's much more rigid. And then he's got the elbow bend and the wrist twist. And then the head is on a, a ball socket joint. And then the same deal with the feet here. So that's him. And he would get the big sword and the whip. So I should be able to get that in his hand pretty easily because he's got a large hand there. So. Well, I'll tell you this, they're not going to go dropping these weapons once they're holding them. They are snug. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got his sword. Now we get this whip, which hopefully will be a little easier to hold since it's rounded. Yep, a little easier to get that. So. There's that, and that, and then gurney here get this tape off of his sword here this one's okay so the face you know Thanos The armor, it's the still suit, but more of the armor style still, still suit. And uh, he's he is posable at the upper torso. Uh, the arms, same rotator cuff, elbow, wrist, and then feet have the uh, the bendable toe. I'm gonna check out Raban one more time just to make sure he's not posable at the base. No, no, he is. He's definitely molded, so he does not twist at the torso at all. So, <laughs> not a big deal, but surprising he's not that posable. Since you're probably supposed to set up a battle scene with these two. Another very thick grip on the sword with a very tight grip hand here. There we go. But again, once they're holding it, they're holding it. So that's good. Let's get this in here. These swords have really large... I mean, you see how large these um, hilts are on these swords. And this pommel at the end is very large compared to the size of the hand. So you can see what I'm trying to do here. It's just not... You really have to pry the fingers apart to really get them in there. Which, I'm sorry, I have to do it off camera, but I'm kind of having to shove it up against my chest to get it in there. There we go. So. There's Gurney. So it is the same base as the other, uh, the Shashakli and Stilgar set. So let's put him on this side. And then we'll get Raban on here. I have to stand it up here. It's on the heel. Hmm. There we go. Oh, and then he fell off. So I really have to work with getting these posed properly on these bases. As of right now, I'm just kind of sticking them on there. 
I know they do pose on there, but it's a bit of a challenge right now. So we'll make them work. And then, last but not least, we have Paul and Fade in their final duel. So at this point, it's not just Paul, it's Paul Muadib, but it does just say Paul Atreides on here, probably because they're trying to keep some spoilers out, I guess, for a movie that's already been filmed twice before and a book that's written in 1965, but I guess some people don't know the story, so don't want to give away all the plot details on the figures, which is good, because sometimes they'll do that. Remember episode one of Star Wars had the soundtrack come out with a major plot point revealed in the song title, so... And that was like weeks before the movie came out. A lot of people were upset about that. Okay. So, these two both have the round bases again. And the bio cards. Put the bases in here. I kind of feel like I like these round bases better. It seems like it's a little easier to pose the figures standing on these than the uh, sculpted bases, but the sculpted bases look so much better. So it's kind of a 50-50 proposition where it's form over, fu form over function, you know, which do you prefer, you know? So. Let's get it from the back here. Kidding about this packing. Oh, <coughs> Excuse me. Well, if this is Toy Story, these like guys would never escape. There we go. And then they both. Whoops. Knock my camera over almost. They both have a a knife each. So, if you want to give the Emperor an accessory of some kind, technically you could give him this one, uh, because that's his blade that Fade uses in the last fight. Spoiler alert. Let's get that tucked in there right now before we go any further. There we go. So this is interesting. Um, got Fade screaming. And uh, I don't know if he's supposed to have black teeth or no teeth. <laughs> it's really hard to tell. Um, trying to get this to zoom in on it there. Um, it's hard to tell. Probably black teeth, but yeah, it gives them a good, uh, terrifying look. So, much different than Sting from, uh, the 84 Dune. But, uh, here he is. So he's got armor with no robe this time, just the dagger. And of course the heads are all, you know, ball socket heads. So technically you could swap this head for the more calm looking head if you wanted to switch them out. And he just goes on this base as the Series 1 figures did. And then Paul, who has taken a hit to the head here, got some blood on his face coming down the side. And uh, no, no plug here. It looks, it looks like it's kind of down right here molded into it, so no no nose plug this time. 
And then he has uh, his Chris knife, which I did not take out of the package yet. There we go. We'll give him his blade. And again, these things are so snug. Really big hilts for really small hands. Um, it's, it's a little frustrating, I have to admit. Again, once they're holding it, they're holding it, and it's fine, but I almost feel like I need to soak them in warm water for a second to uh, loosen that hand up. There we go. All right. So there he is with his knife. Again, different facial sculpt, uh, no soft goods on this one. Same posability. They both had the same posability. Um, they're just good to kind of square off against each other here. So, anyway, let me see if I can get them all kind of lined up here as best I can. I'll bring the camera down to a better view. Get her on her face there. We've got other fade here. Emperor here, Chenny, and Paul with his sword. And then the extra accessories here with uh, the rocket launchers for these two that I'm not going to try to get in their hands for now. And then the, uh, the spare head for uh, Shashakli. Again, if you're wanting to do an army builder kind of thing. And let me move my camera down here so you can see. There you go. So there they all are. Let me move this trash out of the way here. So there's everybody. So that is wave two of the Dune figures for uh, Dune. Well, now part two. So it's... Dune Part 2 Wave 1 or Dune Wave 2, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, from McFarland figures, so or from uh, McFarland toys. So uh, go ahead and let me know what you think. Are you going to be getting these? What do you think of the uh, designs on them? I think they look great. Um, there's a little bit of difficulty, obviously, with the weapons, and some of them lack posability more than others. But uh, And then, of course, the Emperor is a little bit of a... A little bit of a letdown, but it's still really cool to have the figure. I'd rather have him than not have him. So, Plus, it's Christopher Walken. You can't go wrong with that. So, Anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and uh, I will catch you on the next video. Take care.